first of all, you're a native of New Zealand? Yes, I was born in New Zealand. How much of your childhood did you spend in New Zealand? Uh, well, I uh, left New Zealand relatively young. I had a year in Japan, uh, a seven-month stint in Sydney, Australia, and then seven years in London, and then 35 years in Rome, and then New York, and... Uh, now here. Yeah. I'm very excited to talk about the Rome part, because <laughs> I know some great stories about you. Right. But um, from New Zealand, did you begin your art career in New Zealand? I trained, as, um, I trained as an actor, a dancer, and became a choreographer. And when I went to London, I went literally as an actor. I thought I was God's gift to the theatre and thought, well, you know, it would be, it would lay at my feet, welcoming me, well, it was tough. <laughs> to say. And uh, I, uh, at the age of 35, I literally changed my career entirely. What was, was your career at that time? Well, the, the, as a matter of fact, at the time I changed it, I was doing television. I was a freelance television reporter in Cardiff, in Wales, of all places, but I was. and. I was also uh, the choreographer and principal dancer of a review uh, that was we were playing in Wales at the time. And uh, I received a cable just before going on stage that my father had died. And I had a, um, I went to my dressing room, destroyed the entire dressing room, mirrors, everything, and then calmly walked out on stage and we did the show. A true, true artist. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, I, um, I found that when I was, uh, when I was doing my, my television show, that they, they would bring me the script. This was directly afterwards. Uh, they would bring me the script, and once they went, lights, camera, action. Yes, good evening, everybody. And I had absolutely no idea what was written on that paper. It was a blank. And so I realized something very serious had happened. And I was, uh, I tried three, three separate nights, three nights in, in succession, this happened to me. And my anchor man said, Colin, it's time that you saw a doctor, something is very wrong. So he, uh, I did, and he said, you know, uh, Colin, you've had a, 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 ment a, a, a mental breakdown, really, is what it was. And he said, I suggest that you get out of the theater and do something totally different in your life. Change it. So I went back to London. I'm doing this very short and sweet. Went back to London, became a chef in a restaurant because I love cooking. And I chefed for seven months. And then I thought, no, 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 no. This is not my life. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to Europe. And I traveled around Europe for several months. And I finished in Rome in September of 1961. And, uh, I mean, you're surrounded by art in Rome. And, well, of course. And, and I traveled all over Italy to all the museums and to all the churches. And, you know, I was, all this art came in on me. And I just felt, I felt I'd come home. I felt that Italy was my home. And I've always said that Colin, the sculptor, was born in Rome. Let me ask you, Colin, did you acquire your, your background, your, your being able to become an artist, the artist that you are. Did you acquire this predominantly in, uh, specifically in Rome? Well, I was always in the performing arts, so suddenly it was, it was no great change really, you know. You know what it is, how I feel about this? I feel that what I was doing on stage, I had clay and I was able to put that, those emotions and feelings into the clay and make the clay dance for me and move for me. But where did you acquire the training to? I had no training. None. It was right the off guy the cuff, the I can assure you. Yes, it was right off the cuff. The first piece that I did was, uh, yeah, about uh, second or third. The first was the, um, the seduction of Adam. That was the third. That's the ballerina. And she represents the theater for me as in the in the early stages of my career 
waiting in the wings. She is literally standing on her, her toes, waiting in the wings to go on. Now, my, my lines changed and my forms changed from there, but that was a very early piece. As a matter of fact, <laughs> when I went to the foundry to have my first piece cast, uh, and the Mongolian warrior, by the way, is the first one I actually had cast in bronze. And the, uh, the guy who was in charge, uh, head of the, the foundry, wonderful sculptor, Herzl Emanuel, one of America's great sculptors. And uh, Herzl said to me, you know, Colin, I think you have to learn a little bit about armatures. I said, why is that? What is that? What is that word? What does that mean? Well, he said an armature is like a, a skeleton, and you work from the skeleton, you put the clay over it, and you mold it there. It will support your work, so that your work won't collapse. Well, I've had many pieces collapse in my time, of course. But I did, that's when I, he was, I've always said that Herzl was my mentor. He wasn't my teacher because, but he was my mentor, so it's almost the same thing, but he guided me. And when I was in, had problems, like once I, my cat was performing rather beautifully on my terrace in Rome, and I got the clay, and I'm sitting on a chair, and, and I'm sitting this way with the back of the chair in front of me, and I had the clay there, and I put, started putting the clay on the back of the chair, and I'm molding it and molding it, and I'm watching Chloe, and as I'm doing it, she just came out of that chair. I mean, she literally came out of it. So I finished up with my clay model on my kitchen chair. And I thought, well, now what do I do? I had absolutely no idea what to do. So I got a saw, and I sawed off the, 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 the chair, the, the back of the chair, and carried it down to Herzl at the foundry. And he said to me, Good gracious, well, that was very intuitive of you to you do that because you've made rather a beautiful relief. Oh, I said, is that what you call that? <laughs> he said, yeah, it's going to be a relief. But he said, you didn't have to destroy your chair, you know, Colin. We could have taken a mold from that. We <laughs> didn't have to destroy it. But, I, you know, I, as I didn't know anything and I, I didn't know how to support anything, I used to grab things in my apartment like pencils and or anything that I could see. I'd use kitchen knives and things and stick it in the clay to, to support Just until I learned yes. what to do, until I, I learned how to do it. Uh, show with the audience your story. You were the papa uh, of 20... 33. 33 <laughs> girls, and l tell me how this came to be. First, first of all, this was yes. before your days as an artist uh, in this respect. Yes, this it was just art. at the very, very beginning. I had already dabbled in clay. I had felt clay and mm -hmm. I, I knew what it was a, a little bit of what, what it was about. And I went down to Southern I was working for the Italian Air Force, teaching uh, English to the Italian Air Force. And I was sent down to a, a, a place called Gioia di Colle, which is in southern Italy, um, between Bari and Taranto. And uh, while I was there, I heard about a Casa della Divina Providenza, which means House of Divine Providence, and uh, that they needed a papa. And I thought, well, I'll go along. And I went along, and I met all these incredible children. And they were all over me like mice. I sat down, and suddenly there were children under there, over there, and playing with my hair, and all over, and giving me little pecks of kisses on the side. I thought, oh, this is too divine for me. I love these kids. And the papa was Professor Lungo, and he was going to Rome to um, work at the Vatican. He had a, a job offered to him, and it was to earn enough money so he could build another wing to the uh, casa for the children. So he said, "Would you? could you do it financially, take this over as a financial thing? You have 33 children to feed and clothe. Can you do it? And I said, well, I have nothing else. I think I can do it. I don't know. And, you know, I was 35 years old. I had, n I don't know why I was said yes so quickly and so willingly, but I felt for these children tremendously. And uh, then I had to entertain the kids, so I taught them to sing and to dance, and we had little 
concerts and shows and things which I put on for the locals. And then I realized that the children needed more than that. They needed time quietly doing something instead of screaming and running around the house. So I brought clay in and I had this big long refractory table and I put a lump of clay in front of each child and I sat at the center of the table and I said, all right, kids, let's start. And it was, oh, Papa, Papa, of course we put so far in Papa, of course we And tears streaming down their cheeks and everything. I said, what do you mean, what can you do? You use your imagination. What is in your little heads there? That's your imagination. Now, you put that into the clay and voila, something will happen. And it did. And I watched them and as I watched them, I thought, one moment, I can do that too. So I did. And that's how I grew into a sculpt.